Okay, let's return to our nodal, our nodal example last time where we were solving this problem using nodal analysis. And as we said before, this is basic nodal analysis where I wrote all of these equations. Now, let's see if we can make this problem a little bit simpler. And what I want to do is first introduce nodal analysis shortcut number one. And what is shortcut number one? Well, it's something that I've already showed you guys how to do. Instead of writing the KCL and the Ohm's Law equations separately, let's write them by combining those together into an equation. So let's combine KCL plus Ohm's Law for each node. So in this case, I'm going to go and I'm going to ignore the I1, I2, I3, and I4 variables. Let's simply write this by saying for node number one, 10 going in is equal to V1 minus V2 over 2 going out. plus V1 minus V4 over 1 going out. For node number 2, V1 minus V2 over 2 going in, plus 2 going in, must be equal to V2 minus 0 over 10. And for node number 4, for my V4 node, I've got that V1 minus V4 over 1 must be equal to V4 minus 0 over 3. So here are my equations. Instead of seven equations, I wrote this just using three equations. Now note that I did not even need to define these I1, I2, and I3, and I4 current variables. They weren't even necessary. All I need to do is draw the direction of the current, draw the polarity of the voltage drop across the resistor, and then just write it as with Ohm's law. So what I'm doing here is these, four, these three equations here are really nothing more than these equations substituted into those. But why go to that extra effort? I don't need to know I1, I2, I3, and I4. I'm just trying to solve for the nodal, the, uh, nodal voltages. Let's just write these directly. And so if I go ahead and solve for these, what I'm going to get are these three voltages. Okay, now you can look at this and say, well, Dr. Holman, what if I need to know those currents? Well, that's not a problem. If you know the voltages, the currents are easy. So in other words, if I know the voltage at each node, in this case, V1 is 35 volts, V4 is 26.25 volts, and V2 is 32.5 volts, then everything becomes easy. Now I can just go through and quickly use Ohm's law to solve for each of these currents. So in this case, what I'll get is this is 8.75 amps, 35 minus 26.25 divided by 1. 26.25 divided by 3 is also 8.75 amps. V1 minus V2 divided by 5 will be equal to 1.25 amps. And V2 divided by 10 will be equal to 30, pardon me, 3.25 amps. Those, pardon me, so 32.5 divided by 10 is 3.25 amps. Excuse me. Okay, so there are my currents. So that's why all we care about is finding the node voltages. If we figure out what the node voltages are, the rest is easy. And incidentally, also note that I can do a check here. Once I've 
written down these node voltages and calculated the currents through the resistors, all I have to do now is verify whether or not KCL is actually satisfied. In other words, let's do a check. Let's do a KCL check for the solution. The question being is this, does KCL hold for each node? For node 1, does 10 equal 8.75 plus 1.25? Yes, it does. 8.75 is equal to 8.75, obviously. Does 1.25 plus 2 equal 3.25? Yes, so the currents match. The currents satisfy KCL. That tells me that I, unless I have used a wrong value for one of the elements, I have worked this problem correctly. This is actually quite often a much easier and quicker way to check your answer to see if it makes sense, rather than to do a power balance for the entire equation. If you can get numerical values for all of the currents and then just check and see if KCL is satisfied at every node, that's a quick way to check to see if you did your problem correctly. All right? So that is one shortcut, but let's look at another shortcut. Turns out we can simplify this problem even more. So shortcut number two is this. There's a way to simplify this problem even further. And that is by only writing nodal equations for what we call the essential nodes. So for most circuits, not all, but for most circuits, only the essential nodes are needed to solve the problem. Essential nodes. What do I mean by essential nodes? An essential node is that when a node has three or more branches connected to it. A non-essential node occurs when we have a node with only two branches, two elements connected to it. And why is that important? because when two branches are connected and there are, there's nothing else connected between them, for example, as in this node here and node four, that is a non-essential node. Clearly, those two elements are in series. Therefore, the elements are in series. And therefore, they have the same current So let's look at this problem a little bit differently. Let's only specify and solve for the essential nodes. So let's go back to this problem and notice what I'm going to do here. I'm solving. I've got this node and this node, this node. These three nodes are the only essential nodes. This is a non-essential node. So I sit node 3 to ground. I've got node 1 and node 2, voltages V1 and V2. That is a non-essential node. What I'm going to do is 
Since the same current flows through both resistors, I'm going to draw that current going through both of them. And now I'm going to define a voltage drop across both of those resistors. And if you look at this and think about it, really, I can add those two resistors together into a single resistor. That's really what I'm doing with the non-essential node. So now I can go through and I can write the KCL equations just for the essential node. So in this case, for node V1, I've got 10 going in is equal to V1 minus V2 over 2 plus V1 minus 0 divided by 1 plus 3. I'm just adding those two resistors together for node V2. In this case, I've got V1 minus V2 over 2 plus 2 is equal to V2 minus 0 over 10. Now look what I've got. I've got two equations, two unknowns, V1 and V2. That's all I've got left. And now I can go through and I can solve for this and I will get the values for V1 and V2. Once I know those, I can figure out the currents through all of the elements because I know these two currents have to be the same and it's easy to find the voltage of that node just by using Ohm's law. So really, the essential nodes are really the only ones I truly needed to solve this with. So look for non-essential nodes. You don't need to specify a node voltage and then simply solve for the non-essential nodes. Now I want to point out, if you want to include that node and write a KCL equation for that node, there's nothing wrong with doing that. All you're simply going to do is add an additional equation, but there's nothing wrong with that. But unless you need to know that voltage, if it's not essential, it isn't necessary in order for you to write the KCL equations for the essential nodes. Okay? So, in this case, I've now got a way where I've gone from basic nodal analysis and I had seven equations and seven unknowns and I've actually been able by applying these two shortcuts to go all the way down to solving with just two equations to get the essential node voltages. And once I have those, everything else falls into place. So I strongly recommend everybody apply at the very least shortcut number one when you work these problems on exams or in homework. And ideally you should also look for shortcut number two, but really this is the one you should do because eliminating the current variables for each resistor, it's just a waste of time to include those. You're making the problem unnecessarily complex. It's much easier to combine KCL and Ohm's law. That makes for a much, much simpler problem. So I do not recommend you do basic nodal analysis where you specify every variable. At the very least, do the first shortcut and preferably, I think you should also do the second shortcut as well. All those things will make the problem easier. And as you become more experienced and learn more about nodal analysis and become more comfortable with it, you'll learn to start applying these shortcuts yourself. Okay? So let's uh, take all this together and let's, let's take these techniques and combine them together. And next time we're going to work an example. And in addition, when we work that example, we're going to include a dependent source. Because it turns out that if you have a dependent source in a nodal problem, you also have to include something called the dependent source variable equation. So we'll see that example next time.